just because you asked. So in my previous video, I went through the derivation of Newton's second law in polar coordinates. And then I modeled the motion of a pendulum using numerical calculations in Python. And I have it all on the board right here, so I'm going to show it to you in just a second. But what I want to do today is to do the same thing, not in WebVPython, but in, quote, real Python. WebVPython's not real Python. I know that. We know that. Okay. So I'll show you how to do it. And there's actually two ways you can do it in, um, in what we could call real Python. But let's go over what we did before. So the first thing is that in uh, a, a mass hanging on a string, if you want to use Newtonian physics, um, there's a problem the tension force is not constant in magnitude or direction. However, if, if you switch to polar coordinates, then the acceleration in the r direction is zero. So what I did was you know, define uh, the, un the vector r in polar coordinates, take the derivatives, you have to take the derivatives of the unit vectors, blah, 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 go watch the video because there's a lot of stuff there. It's not blah, blah, it's actually pretty fun, okay. But we get down to this is the acceleration in polar coordinates. Uh, of course, that term goes away because r double dot is zero. Um, AR is zero, right? So now I'm kind of confused. Okay, but anyway, we get down to this differential equation. Uh, negative G sine theta is L theta double dot. And again, theta double dot means second derivative with respect to time. So how do we solve that problem? Well, one way is to start with our differential equation, break it into short time intervals. Delta T is 0 0.01 seconds. Uh, and then say theta double dot is the change in theta dot over that time interval. And we can use that to update theta dot. And then we can use that to update theta and then do the whole thing over again. And if you want all the details, watch that previous video. I'll link it down below. But really, I want to focus on how do we do this in Python. And there's actually, there's technically three ways, but I'm going to do it two ways. The first way, I'm going to do it pretty much the same as what I did before. Okay. And then I'm going to use uh, a different way. So let's just get to it. Okay. Are you ready? This is Jupyter Notebooks. Uh, you can install it uh, with going, to, if you Google Anaconda, you can find it and you can install this. You don't have to. Okay, there is Google Colab, and Google Colab is an uh, online version of this, so you don't have to install anything, and it runs on your, your tablet and stuff like that, so it's pretty cool. But I'm using this, so here we are. Uh, and and the, the nice thing about this Jupyter Notebook is we can write code in different cells and then run just a cell, and then you can have text cells and stuff like that. Now, I'm not going to give you a tutorial on the whole thing because I'm not really that great at it, but let's just get started. So here's a cell, and the first thing I need to do is to uh, import some modules, right? Because normal Python doesn't do everything that we want to do. We want to use mathematical functions, and we want to use plotting. So we're going to need two different modules. So I'm going to import those modules, import numpy. Some people say numpy. I like to say numpy because it looks cool, uh, as np. So now that means that whenever I say np dot, it means take that function from the numpy module. And then for plotting, I'm going to import matplotlib.pyplot as plt. And you can import numpy as no if you want. Doesn't matter. You name it. But don't do that. Okay, I had some students that say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to name it something else. And then at one point, you're going to say, oh, well, everyone else uses np. So it's going to make yourself confused. So let's just run this module and make sure it's working. Uh, so the little asterisk means that it is indeed running at this time. And it's going to take a little second. I don't know why it takes so long, but it, it just takes a second to load that. Now, let's go ahead and use our constants. Let me look at my same constants I had before. Um, let's see what we have here. We had L is 0.3. So I'm just going to write some variables. L is 0 0.3. G is 9.8. Oh, we didn't have M. Um, DT is 0. Point, let's say DT is 0 0.1, and we'll change that. Uh, that's really all we need. Okay. I'm going to do this the same way that we did it in uh, WebVPython first. So with that, I'm going to say t equals 0, dt equals 0. Point, I already have dt. Uh, I do my initial angle theta. So let's just say theta is equal to 45 degrees, 45 times pi divided by 180. And this is wrong. I just realized it as I was typing it. Because the problem is that pi is not in Python. Pi is in numpy. So I need to call that function 
for that number from pi. So it's np dot. And let's see, move this up a little bit. There we go. Okay. Um, I have theta. I need theta dot, right? I need my initial ang uh, angular velocity. Theta dot is zero. And I think that should be good. Okay. So while, this is exactly what we did before. While, let's do it for two seconds. T less than two. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is to calculate theta double dot. Theta dd dot, and you can call it whatever you want, is equal to negative g times sine of theta, right? But theta sine is not in Python. So I need to say np dot sine of theta divided by L. Now I'm going to use that to update theta. Let's see, kind of roll this whole thing up. Why doesn't that work? Okay, that's fine. I don't want to see all that stuff. Let's see if I just do this. Pull that down, pull that up. Okay, that's a little bit better. Uh, update theta dot, theta dot equals theta dot, theta dot dot plus theta double dot times dt, exactly what I did before. And then theta equals theta plus theta dot times dt. And then update time, t equals t plus dt. Now let's just print um, theta so we can see if it works. And I'm going to run this. And there you go. It did it. Final angle theta. I don't even know if that's right. So what we want to do is to make a graph. And here's where we have a big difference because uh, matplotlib doesn't like to plot one single data point at a time. Maybe there is a way to do that. I think there is, but it's way easier just to plot all the data at once. So what, we're gonna, what we need to do is to add our data points to a list and then plot those lists. So let's go up here and create a list. Um, I'm going to call it theta p equals an empty list. Uh, you can make it an array, but I'm just going to make it a list. And I need time. tp is a list. So what I'm going to do is to add values to this list and then at the end plot those lists. So down here, I don't need to print it. I'm going to add my theta value to my theta list. Theta p equals theta p plus theta. Now you could do append and things like that, but I always like to add it. Make sure you put the square brackets around theta so it says add it to the list. Otherwise, it's just going to give you an error. And then tp is tp plus t. So what I've done is to make, and I only have a time step of 0.1, so I actually can print these out. Let's print these. Let's print tp. Let's just see what it looks like. And there you go. So it did, it did add all those numbers to the list. It went up to 2, um, and that's fine. That's exactly what we want. Now I can make a plot. So to plot it, we're going to use matplotlib. So I'm going to say, let's give it a title, plt uh, dot title uh, pendulum. And then I pendulum. And then I can give it an x-axis, plt dot, is it called x label? I think it's called x label. And this is called that time. And that's fine. And then y label, plt dot y. I'm not really good with matplotlib. Um, so yeah, you'll have to forgive me. Now what I'm going to do is plt dot plot, plt dot plot, tp on the horizontal axis, theta p on the vertical axis. And then I need to show that p plot, plt, plt dot show. And there we go. Okay, and again, my time step's really too large. We can fix that up here. Uh, put this at 0 0.01. And there we go. Same thing. Okay, cool. Okay, now for our second way. So we can utilize uh, the power of Python with Python lists, uh, arrays, an array. So I'm just going to I already have L, I already have G. I'm going to redefine some of these variables, which is a bad idea usually, but I don't really care. Uh, so let's see which one to have. The first, I'm going to do this. T equals uh, NP dot arrange. I'm just looking at what I did before. Zero, T plus DT, DT. Now I do want to change DT to 0.1. Uh, one thing about Python, I already used T. If you use t again, it's just like, fine, whatever, don't care. 
What? How do I get? How do I scroll this whole thing up? Let's see if I do this. Come over here. That's a little bit better. Okay, that's a little bit better. Um, so, if you rename it, it's like fine. Do whatever you want. So now DT is point one. Now T is a is a is an array, which is different than a list. Let's print this out, and I'll tell you what this arrange thing does. Print T. So this is an array, which is super awesome. Um, and this says make a list, make an array. I'm sorry, an array starting at zero. There's the first one zero, uh, up to up to, but not including two plus delta t and by step size delta t. So if you did just two and you didn't do this, it wouldn't include the two, it would just go to 0.119. Okay, but I want to include all the way to two. So now I have a list of my times. So instead of going through a loop and making my, my times by adding dt to it, I made them beforehand, so I have all those. I do want to show you something super awesome about uh, the array. I can just multiply that by two and print it, and then it, did, it multiplied everything by two. It's pretty cool. So you can do operations with these variables as though they're just variables, and that's what makes it really great. Now I'm going to make um, my list of theta values. So let's say theta is equal to uh, np dot zeros uh, length of t. So this says make a list that's the same length as the t and put them all zeros. I think np dot zeros is right. Yep. Okay. And let's just print theta to see if it works. Now, again, that's important because I'm going to go through and change these values, but I need to have values to change. So I'm going to pre-make the list. These are my theta values I'm going to eventually plot. Okay. Now I'm also going to need a theta dot. Theta dot is equal to np dot zeros length of t. It could be length of theta. It's the same thing. Okay, so now I have two lists. I'm going to need that because remember that the, the, when I calculate when I update my theta, I do that with theta dot. So I need theta dot values too. And these are all going to start at zero. But now I do need to start the first theta at something not zero. I need to start it within my initial theta condition. So let's use, uh, I'm going to set that theta zero. That's my first element in the theta list is equal to uh, 45 times np dot pi divided by 180. And then let's print theta just to see that it does indeed work. So there, it changed that first value, but the rest are still zero. That's what we wanted. Now, in this version, what we're going to do is to go through the list of theta dot values and update them based on theta double dot. So I need to calculate theta double dot, use that to update my list of theta dot, which depends on the item before it. Okay, so we always have to start with that item before that. So let's do a different kind of loop. Uh, for i, which one did I do? In range 0 to length of t minus 1. So this will start with i is equal to 0, and it will go to, um, is that what I want to do? That's what I had before. It will go to length of t minus 1. This is wrong. It will go up to 1 minus t. I actually don't like this. I'd rather do this. Let's do this. I guess that's right. Let's just print i and see what it does. So it goes 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 all the way to 20s. Okay, so it starts at zero. It doesn't go all the way to the end of the list, which is good because we are going to start look, changing items based on that. We can't go through all of them, right? So what we want to do is to first calculate theta double dot. Theta dd dot is the same as before. Negative g times np dot sine of theta. But what I want to do is the theta before. I'm going to start on the first element. Is that what I did? Yeah, the first element, uh, i. So it's going to be theta i. And then I need to divide that by l. 
So now I have my theta dot. I can use that to update theta dot. So theta dot of i plus 1. I'm not going to I'm not going to change the first one. That's my initial conditions. I'm going to change the next one. Uh, is equal to uh, theta dot i, the one before it, plus theta double dot, which is just a, a scalar, times uh, dt. And that's going to change that i plus 1 element. Now I'm going to use that to update theta. Theta of i plus 1 is equal to theta of i. This is my update formula, just like before, plus theta, now here's a trick, dot i plus 1 times dt. So we want to use the, the velocity that we just updated. Okay. Uh, and I don't need to update time because I'm not going in a time loop. I've already made my times. That's it. I've already done it. I did do it, right? Yep. Okay. Now we're going to plot those. I'm going to copy this. No, I'm going to do it in here. So let's do plt dot plot. I'm not going to put the labels in there. Uh, t theta and then plt dot show. And there we go. It works. And again, I can make my dt a little bit smaller. Works. So it's a different way of thinking about it by using this array. And, and we're, we're still moving through time. Um, this way is really nice because what if they're not time things? What if it's a space thing? It would still work. We could still do the same idea. Um, personally, I like WebVPython. Why do I like WebVPython? I like WebVPython 1 because the plotting is a little bit easier and nicer. I like the plotting. And, and I think it's easier to access for students to think about uh, instead of to worry about you know, modules and importing modules and arrays. Yes, this is more grown-up Python. I get that. Uh, but it's not always about being a grown-up. Sometimes it's just about physics. Okay, that's enough. Talk to you later.